So we've been talking about the science of resuscitation, um, but we all know that death is deeply mysterious. Why some people die, why others come back, why still others come back and have remarkable stories to tell. I mean, stories, uh, images, uh, visions of what happened when they were at that point of almost being permanently dead. Are those strictly scientific questions when we broach this, this area of mystery here, or are we venturing into some other terrain as well? You're talking about knowing the unknowable, and there, I think, are some, you know, science is interesting, and think about it. What science is all about is I'll say to Lance, you know, the way you want to do this is you got to do it this way. And he'll look, me, look at me and go, prove it. Right, show me the evidence, and and that's really what it is, and, and changing people's minds. But there are some things that are unknowable. Uh, Sam is trying to study this. Um, I have certain opinions and ideas about what we go through as human beings. Um, having personally, I've had the privilege of watching how many many people die. And uh, at a certain point, you know, I sometimes get the eye rolls and stuff because I know that at a certain point, I'm putting it all together. It is in some extent unknowable. And even though I consider myself a, a medical scientist, for me to really get it and understand it, I have to fill in the blanks a little bit. Can you be a little more specific? What, what is unknowable? Yeah, there? well, the, well, I'll give you the, the example is, you know, I watch people battle through these illnesses, these brain injuries. And one thing that's amazing doing my kind of work is you wouldn't believe. I mean, you, you want to understand how precious life is. Watch what people will go through to have a, you know, a day, to have another holiday with their grandchild. It's unbelievable what people are willing to endure. When people are ventilated and they're fighting this kind of battle and it's hard and we wake them up and we're like, you know, we always have our things, you know, look me in the eyes and show me two fingers. And we, right, we turn off the sedation. We want to know they're in there and following. And I've seen a pattern, though, where I will go to the same person I've seen every day this week. And we, right, we wake them up. And they're gone. They don't, they, their, their brain has stopped working. And there's no physiologic reason why has nothing to do with the change in their CAT scan, nothing to do with the pressure in their skull, nothing to do with oxygen blood pressure. It's almost as if it's, you used the term the death, the death, the death switch, but it's a letting go. And, and, you know, and, and I, I'll say Mrs. Jones has decided that she's had enough. And you know, crush her fingernails, no response. And I think it's, and I'm like, hey, that's okay. Do so you, you really know? think that is a, a personal I think it decision? Happens. I don't know. I, I think it's a letting go. I don't know if it's a decision. Maybe it's how much can you do. But it's something that I've seen over and over that, you know, Sorry. and I'll talk about this, and sometimes I get the, oh, here he goes, <laughs> you know, with your crunchy granola ideas. <laughs> but, you know, how do you really put the, how do you explain how do you explain this? This really happens, you know? And we, you wouldn't be able to, you know, you, you, the only way you even see this happening is we have life support, right? I mean, the only, a lot of these things are all, we're, we're getting new insight into the human condition because of the tools and because of the technology. And, you know, that's just an, another example. And if I'm, am I right or wrong about my interpretation? I think it's unanswerable. I just know it happens. So, Lance, let me turn to you. I'm, I'm guessing you also have had these kinds of wow experiences. I mean, what happened there? Well, I, I mean, for me, the so for me, the wow experiences have been the people who have woken up that everybody said they just weren't that it wasn't going to happen. So, I have a neighbor who had a cardiac arrest, and he went down in his photographic studio. He's putting together a show, and somebody did CPR but not very well. He got rushed to the hospital and he was in terrible shape. They defibrillated his heart over 20 times to get it started and at that point he was very unstable. We put him on medications to bring the blood pressure up because his blood pressure is dangerously low and um, the hospital had just begun to cool. So he was actually the second patient that got cooled 
at my neighborhood hospital right after they had sort of adopted what we do. And as soon as they cooled him down, his blood pressure kind of stabilized and everything stabilized. Then, of course, and I'm going to mm -hmm. pick on you just for a second, All but right. not, not on you personally, but on the field of neurology just a little bit to say that the neurology, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, okay, because he's laughing. On, is uh, yeah. The neurologist sure. came in and told his wife that he was brain dead, okay? And, <laughs> and, and, almost, and, almost. Well, well, so, whatever. And so what <laughs> I, the way I actually found out about this was to have a crying neighbor on my doorstep. Okay, at seven o'clock in the morning, saying that they just Lawrence is brain dead, you know, and you've got to come, and they 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 they're cooling him down, like you said, but you've got to come and see him. I'm like, oh, okay. And um, Lawrence made an amazing recovery, but it was a tough recovery. It for five days he was in coma and had hardly any responsiveness at all. And on the fifth day, he woke up and was able to speak in five of the seven languages that he is familiar <laughs> with because Aisha could not check the other two. Did he you know? pick up any new ones? And, and so he did not pick up any new ones, nor did he, unfortunately, he didn't see any lights. But, um, but, you know, he went to rehab. A year later, he got to put his photographic show up at City Hall, and he has been essentially completely intact since then. And he, you know, he comes over to the house now all the time when we have deep discussions about different things. And, you know, the, the most interesting thing, though, is that he now sees his life as something that has a beginning and it, and it has an end. Is his, does he see his life differently now after all of this? He, he does. He, he, mm -hmm. he sees that it has a beginning and that it has an end. And he didn't, he lived his life assuming that he would just live forever like, like I do, you know, <laughs> and um, like most of us do, right? I mean, we don't really think about the fa that fact, and he now has been confronted right. with that. And so there's things he wants to do, and he's doing projects, and he's, he's doing fabulously. But um, that, was, that was one of the moments when people started to call me saying, what is this cooling thing that you guys are doing? We've never had anybody survive like this. So, um, Sam, let me turn to you. Uh, Tell me about a case that has just been deeply mysterious to you. You're still trying to sort it out. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I've seen many, many cases uh, at work. Uh, one example that comes to my mind, just touching on what we already talked about, was a case that came to the emergency room and the, the ambulance, the EMS crews had worked on this person. And they told his wife that, you know, unfortunately he came to the emergency, they worked on him for about an hour and they said he's dead and they declared him dead. And uh, she was grieving and, of course, distraught. Um, and then I got a call um, from the emergency room saying, could you come down here, please? Uh, we have a difficult situation. And I said, well, what is the situation? They said, well, the thing is we have this person that we declared dead because he died, um, but now he's not dead anymore and his heart's beating. <laughs> so could you take him to the ICU and talk to his wife and explain that to him? To <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I go down there, and she's distraught, this poor lady, you know. She's mm -hmm. been told, and that's exactly what I was saying at the beginning. And the reality was that he wasn't dead anymore. The sad thing was that she had been so, I want to say, brainwashed by everyone else, saying that this is futile, mm -hmm. that she wouldn't allow us to continue to treat her husband, and I think we could have got him back. So that was, my, I've had many cases like this. And I, but I think the most astonishing case that I've come across uh, was a case that was published in one of the medical journals called Resuscitation of a young Japanese woman who essentially wanted to take her own life. And she went to some forest somewhere and took a bunch of pills. We don't know exactly what she took. And somewhere along the line, her heart stopped, and she, she technically died as far as everyone else would consider her dead. Uh, a passerby found, found her the following morning. Um, her body temperature at that point was 20 degrees Celsius, which is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which meant she must have been dead for hours for a temperature to have dropped quite so low. And to cut a long story short, in Japan, <clears throat> the ambulance crews didn't declare her. They did CPR on her. They took her to a local hospital where they also didn't declare her. And what's fascinating is that many of those hospitals have these ECMO mm -hmm. machines, these bypass machines, mm -hmm. as standard of care there, which we don't use in the US. They connected this young girl to this machine. They left her to warm up and essentially have oxygen delivered to her brain for six and a half hours. And around 2.30 in the afternoon, her heart restarted. Three weeks later, she left the hospital with a slight limp, but she walked out. And I've been in touch with her physician, and the last year she had a baby. And, and that, to me, just highlights everything, that if you do it right, 
that's the outcome. If you don't do it right, then it becomes a self-fulfilling pr prophecy. And that young girl, I guarantee, and I, I'm sure you guys agree, if she had been found by one of our EMS crews, they would have just declared her dead there and then. Yeah. And that's the big, that's the difference.